shall we have a word of prayer. Gracious Father, once again, we are so blessed. We thank you and we bless you. We worship your name. We thank you, God, for the morning service and the blessings of God that you pass across to us. We are committing, O oh God, this hour once again to your hands. We are depending on you. We want you, God, to come down again. Especially, O oh God, how you used to do even in the cool of the day in Eden. When you always come down, O oh God, and fellowship, O oh God, with your people. Father, Lord Jesus, may you once again be greatly fed in our midst, O oh Lord. May you bless us richly and refresh our soul, O oh God. That, Lord Jesus, we may take something tangibly home this evening, Father. And we may say that you have been our help, Lord. Granted, gracious Heavenly Father, O Lord Jesus, as in these sense, O God, submitting myself unto you, Lord, may you reach out to your children, Father. Amen. Thank you, gracious Heavenly Lord. Amen. Attend to every need, O Father. Let honor and glory be to your name, Lord. We thanks and we bless you. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen and amen. amen. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God richly bless you. Please, before we have our seat, um, just uh, let us turn to the scripture. Just one, I will not gonna, I'm not going to take our time. Um, I just try to cut up the service a little while so that because I'll still be traveling. God bless you. So <clears throat> let's turn into Mark. I'm going to read from two places. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Verse uh, 46. Mark chapter 10. Verse 46 to 52. I will also read the book of Romans chapter 4. Mark 10. Are we there? And they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciple and a great number of people. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, and he called thee. And he cast away his garment, rose, and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What will thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the way. Hallelujah. Well, we can be seated. Let's still read from the book of Romans, chapter 4. Let's read from Romans, chapter 4. I'll read Romans 4, 19, 19 to 21. Romans 4, from verse 19 to 21. I'm being not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being full, fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, just let us fellowship around this message. Faith in action. Amen. 
just want to talk little on faith in action. Hallelujah. Many of the time we know we talk about faith. But sometimes we are afraid to put our feet in action. Amen. The story of this the man that we read the year in the scripture by the name Blind Bartimaeus. I think we are taking in for the first character here. Brother Brown told us even the prophet even preached message on Blind Bartimaeus about four different places or five the blind bad mayors but mayors was probably born a blind baby or a blind boy and the mama told him different bible stories as he grew and in those days they used to have a train lamp for the high. And being that there's many beggars, it look like you need to get something for an attraction to get the money. So but mayors have to talk to dove that they play with. I think many of us are conversant with the story. So he plays with the two doves to call the attention of people to give him money. Perhaps some of them may have some other things. Maybe some certain weasel. Maybe some we just have a little drum. Something like that to attract the attention of the people. And Balmeyos have a lamp for his eyes. Amen. And he was a believer in Jehovah. So one day, Badmeyer's wife was sick. And he has tried taking her to the hospital. Every medical addiction has been done and it was to no avail. But Abraham says science is good. He said, but when we climb the tree of science and we didn't see result, he said, we climb to the tree of life. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, it's normal thing. He said, for normal sensible person, when your boy is sick or something, he said, you take him to the hospital. Oh, yes. that's, that's correct. But there's something that is higher than that. Amen. And that's what we Christians enjoy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So what did he do? But Moses went to God and said, oh, great Jehovah. I can't avoid to lose my wife. And he promised God something. But do you know that sometimes before you get some things from God, sometimes God wants you to make him a promise. <laughs> you said, uh, yes. Sometimes God wants to draw your attention more. He wants you to make him a promise. And but may us look up to God and say, oh God, if you will heal my wife, I will offer for a bond offering my two doves. Amen. Amen. And God answers but me. You can imagine why did God wait to that time? Why did he wait to that time until but said, say, Lord, if you will, God wanted his attention more. He wants him to give him his promise. Because why? God have a special blessing for him. Hallelujah. So when Balmeos prayed and made a promise to God, God answered him. 
and the wife was healed. Ali went to the temple and fulfilled his promise. But that should be this means of lively income. <laughs> Something that is using to attract the attention to get the money. So that means his income will drop. <laughs> oh yes. That means the attention of the people to him will drop. His income will drop. So he has to make some extra effort. Oh, may God help us. But in it, God was there. And sometimes when you pass a trial, God will raise it higher. And God raise the trial higher again. Is where God seek. And he tried the same thing. Struggling for income and yet every little thing that he see, he have to put it just for the head of that boy. Hmm. To no avail. And, and he thought, what am I going to do again? He has climbed the tree of science. He's not working. He needs to climb the tree of life. Hallelujah. And he said, oh God! Jehovah! I can't avoid to lose my baby. If you will heal this boy, I will give you my lap for a bone sacrifice. This lamp, this lamp, this eye. Hallelujah. God answers bad mayors. Why did God wait to that time? Why can't God allow science to do their work and let the boy go? Sometimes we have a lot of questions that said, why, why, why? But let me tell you, God is not under obligation to explain anything to us. God answered bad mayors. Then what happened? So this faithful day, bad mayors was going to the temple and the priests were looking. This guy has come. What, what, what is he coming for again? And they just noticed he was dragging the lamb. What is he coming to do? And he just went to the priest. Said, Sir, said, I, 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 I bring this. Uh, he said, For what? For sacrifice. They said, Balmeos, do you know what you are doing? Or do you know what you want to do? He said, No. He said, I bring this for sacrifice. They said, No. This one is your highs. The only eyes you have. This is not for sacrifice. He said, look, if you don't have money, the priest said, don't worry, we will help you and get a lamb for sacrifice. But Mayor said, no. He said, I didn't promise God another lamp. What I promise God is this lamp. You know some of us sometimes we are so smart. Maybe when we need something we just said God oh Lord if you can do it for me I'm going to do this I'm going to do that. Maybe you don't even have enough faith that God is going to do that and God will just do it. That's done it. But now it is not in your part to play your part. You now say, God understands. You say, uh, you know, at least I know that God understands. Do you know you are failing? God keep his own promise, but you don't keep your own. 
So brother, you said God keep his promise. I will keep my promise. I will keep mine. Because he keep his. I don't promise him another lamb. He said, I said this lamb for sacrifice. And Badmeyos offered the lamb for sacrifice. His eyes. So you cannot imagine what he have to go through. Coming out, getting money, and going back. No high, no attraction again. Now would the bad boy depend on only on God. Hallelujah. So one day, the prophet said he was sitting on one of the stones in Jericho that fell. And started thinking and meditating on that great mighty Jehovah. Who just by the sounding of the trumpet fell the wall of Jericho. But today he thought they said the day of miracle is past. And he began to think, oh, how I wish to live in those days when this mighty Jehovah is performing his wonder. Perhaps I would have received my son. And while he was meditating on those things, behold, there was noise all around. Hallelujah. He just asked somebody, said, Oh, what are you talking about? There's grave there. If you know that you can raise the dead, you come, 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 come and come and raise the dead. And he was like, ah, what is going on? They said, Don't mind him. Is that fanatic? He said he can raise the dead. He said he can do this. Then after those noise, he had another one. There's a certain group saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Let's see that come in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It depends on where you are receiving your information. Oh. It depends on where you are receiving your information. If you ask some people about Jesus Christ, they will tell you, don't mind that guy. He's a busy babe. But some will tell you that we have handled him the word of life. <laughs> they will tell you that with our hands, we have handled him the word of life. We had a voice from the excellency when he spoke from Mount Transfiguration. This is my beloved son. In Wuna, our place. Hallelujah. Where are you hearing your information? Where is the source of your inspiration? Is it from the word? Or from creed? Amen. What happened? Then, he began to hurt some people. Crying, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh my. A son of David. Oh, praise the Lord. Inspiration struck him. Oh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is him. That was promised. He said, this is my time. Hallelujah. Amen. Something struck blind bad mayors. The faith that was inside of him was ignited. And he began to scream, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, have mercy on me. Amen. He just had noise though. Noise is all around. But right where he was, he started screaming. He didn't know where Christ was. He didn't know the direction he has went to. But you know what? There's something about the Lord. Distance is not 
एक बार ये आती हूं And let me tell you something. If all that Bartimaeus have is just his noise, there's no way Jesus could have had him. Oh yes. Because he was not even close to where he was. It was not just the noise of Bartimaeus that Jesus had. It was his faith in action. Because anywhere Christ was, there was always noise all around. Just like when he said one time, he asked Peter, we got there now. He asked Peter, he said, who touched me? Hallelujah. A faith is in action and is pulling virtue from Christ. But people are touching him and pulling him, there's no virtue coming out. But this woman touched him and Jesus waited and said, who touched me? To Peter, I say, Master, people are drugging day. Don't let these Pharisees hear. They will say that something is not. Who taught you how? You see, everybody is touching you. Oh, Jesus, look at it. Look, this man is ignorant. I say, Somebody touch me. And you can touch him tonight. It is a, a different touch. You can give Christ a different touch. Amen. Jesus said, Who touch me? The woman said, If I can but touch the hem of his garment. Amen. I don't even need to embrace him. I don't need to pull his stuff. If I can just touch the hem. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith in action. And this woman touched Christ and Christ said, Who touched me? He can say the same thing tonight. That somebody has touched me. But you be the one to touch him tonight. Let your faith touch him. Put your faith in action. Hallelujah. Oh my. But I'm say, Action your faith. Put in action. Hallelujah. Your faith. Amen. He said, he said, what good is it going to do you to read of an historical God if he isn't the same today? Tell me what good. What good is it to come here tell about the story of a mighty God but it's not the same in, a, in your life? What good to talk about the supernatural and you are not experiencing it? Then it will just be in an history. It's not something that you can testify to. I don't want to serve a God like that. I want to serve a God that is real to me, that I know that He is real. Amen. But when you cry, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. Somebody is screaming here. And maybe Christ is at the other hand, or maybe on the express. With the kind of multitude and everybody with noise. But do you know that the faith of Nazar, uh, Bartimaeus make Jesus to stand still? And Jesus says, Somebody is calling on me. <laughs> And they were like, ah, who is calling on you again? Somebody is calling on me. And he must have to tell one of his disciples and said, go to that street. The next junction, cross the next junction. When you get to another T-junction, you will see that man there. <laughs> go and bring him. It was this is noise. Amen. Realize somebody say, Oluwa, 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 Oluwa. What do you want Oluwa to do? Amen. Do you know even when Balmoyos not got there, Jesus he asked him, Now they have brought you. 
what do you want me to do for you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Yes. What do you want me to do? You've come to church. You pray, Lord, Lord, Lord. What do you want the Lord to do? <laughs> oh, Lord. Some will say, say, shout, oh, Lord, seven times. Ah. Can't Olu here? Was it Dev? Oluwa, Oluwa. What do you want me to do? What do you want the Lord to do for you tonight? Connect your faith and let your faith be in action. You're going to see the result. What do you want the Lord to do for you? And Jesus looked. He said, Bad Meus. What would you want me to do? You can say, why did Christ have to ask that kind of question? Can't he see that the man is blind? He should have used his discretion. Maybe you are saying the same thing. Eh, 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 they should understand then that I'm in this condition. Nobody understands. Jesus knew that he was blind, but he asked him. What, what do you want me to do? Because his word say acts and he shall be given. Amen. Amen. What do you want me to do? And he said that I may receive my sight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That I may receive my sight. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, boy, Oh son, go. Thy faith has done what? Has made you who? Look, this is not just an historical story. Amen. We are not talking about a God that is in history and not the present God. If it is the God that is in history, we are talking about and it's not the present God, our gathering is not necessary. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our gathering is not necessary. Are you serving a God that is not alive? Are you serving a God that, that cannot attend to your situation? In crisis? No. He's a living God. Is alive. Amen. My God is a living God. Hallelujah. Amen. Look, the prophet said, Oh my, let me read a little. The prophet said, Action your faith, put in action. What good is it going to do you? To read of historical God if it isn't the same God today. What good is it going to do you to read about George Washington if he is dead and gone? That is just in history. You see, it is just an historical fact. But Jesus raised from the dead and he is the same today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus raised from the dead. He is living today and he is the same today. So we are not talking about God in history. We are talking about God in history that is brought to the present time. Hallelujah. The prophet read the message, lifting him up out of history. This God of history is just the same God today. If it is only in history, it is of no good. Why? Somebody that is freezing to death cannot get warm by a painted fire. Amen. Oh, the man says, I'm freezing. Oh, you see, oh, bro, you are freezing. Oh, then you take a paint, pull, 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 you paint fire on the wall. And you do everything. You are a very good artist. I say, okay, move closer. <sighs> Please tell me, can that painted fire, can it make the man that is freezing to death warm? 
That's a religion without life. He can't make that man warm. He needs the fire. I mean a real fire that is burning that will generate it from his body. The real one. When a man is dying in sin and in stress, he needs the fire of the Holy Ghost that will quicken in his mother body. And the scripture say, oh, he said, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, it will quicken in your mother body. Amen. Hallelujah. Faith in action. Put your faith into work. Hallelujah. Appropriate your faith in the word of God. You will receive the results. The woman with that blood issue, she has spent all. Hallelujah. All are living. There's only one hope remain. And she said, with what I know, with what I have had a testimony, I know Jesus is equal to every problem. If I can touch but the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Hallelujah. What did it? It was her faith. Hallelujah. It was her faith. Let me just speak one character from the Old Testament before we continue. I'm looking at that time. I was telling Brother Femi, said, and I was telling Brother Wanja, I said, I will just try to make sure the service is short. And I said, for the temptation of preacher, when he gets there, now it's a problem sometimes. <laughs> Hallelujah. But this, look at. David. David knows his God. Even when the Israelites were in a backsliding condition, the king, Saul, and David has had an experience with God. And the man came out and said, if anyone, he said, don't let us shed much blood. Don't split much blood. You just let one person rep represent you, and I represent my people. Let him come out. If he's able to defeat me, then we all are going to be your servant. But if I'm able to defeat him, you know why the man is boasting like that? He was so sure of himself. And Buddha Brand said, when that devil think that he has an edge over you, he said that is when he make the boast. Amen. Hallelujah. That is when he make his boasting. And he started boasting until he boasted one day at the wrong time. Amen. And he met the challenger. Bobby Hood, just a little boy. Hallelujah. Amen. Just a redo boy. But God was in it. Amen. God is always in simplicity, you know. Hallelujah. And the boy said, Ah, we face the giant. What is the revelation that David had? <coughs> said, And circumcised Philistine can, should not defy the harmings of the living God. Because he knows it's against the promise. Amen. Something must be wrong somewhere. Said, if father cannot go, I will go and challenge this man. Everything looked like a drama. When David came out with the sack and the five stone, and he came out like David must have, I mean, Goliath must have adjusted his glasses or what Emmet and said, let me put what is, uh, I hope nothing is wrong with the children of Israel. Right? I hope they are in their righteousness. Hey, what is this? And he's all one little boy coming. And he said, I will cut off your head today. Ah. <laughs> you and me. Ah. And all 
the whole Philistine will be laughing. Say, ah! This is a church play. And Goliath said, what? Oh! He said, I, I, I pity your papa, papa. He said, well, what I will do is that I will just take this spear and just shook you and hang you up. The, I will not put it down till the best of the sky feeds on your flesh. And look! He was making the boast at a minute. Because he can do it physically. But he didn't know that there's somebody in that little guy. <laughs> that is more than the arrow and the weight and the power and the strength of Goliath. Hallelujah. David, the faith that he has in Jehovah, he put it into action. Hallelujah. It does not work. Hallelujah. What he has proven is what he went with. If you have proven the name of Jesus Christ to be right, that is what you should go with. Take the name of Jesus with you. Hallelujah. Let's put our faith in action. I don't care what it is. God is equal to every tax. And David put the stone and started weaving in it. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. And he released it. He released it into the hands of Jehovah. When you pray in Jesus' name with faith, you release it into the hands of God that will bring it to pass. You don't need to crack your head and say, Oh, I say going. Oh, let it be direct. No, you have already released it with faith. You release it and commit it into the hands of the Lord. And let God go and accomplish it. When we sing, Take your body to the Lord and leave it there. Some people will come. Some people come to the altar. Pray, 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 pray. Oh Lord. And after that, when they are standing up, they look at the bonding again. Ah. Now the bonding is big, it's too big. Maybe I should carry it again. Can Jesus carry this one? Say, carry it. What have you gone to do before? Take your bonding to the Lord and leave it there. Hallelujah. Leave it there. Don't begin to do the work that God will do. Start to imagine, how is he really going to do it? I have committed it where? Maybe this is how we will do it. Oh. We will pass this way and you are troubling yourself. Because the way of God is past funding. You can't imagine how God is going to do his thing. But one thing is this. God is faithful to his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. David released the stone. And the Holy Spirit took over and he directed it to the right place. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He knows exactly the place to direct the stone. And when he hit Goliath, the people were thinking that Goliath is charging. Because he's moving backward and moving forward. And they were screaming, Oh, go, go, Goliath, go. They don't know that the Goliath gold is going to go down. Yeah. <laughs> they were thinking he's charging and he's warming up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. After you have released the stone by faith, you know, and the devil is, is confused, is about to fall. And when you begin to see him moving, and you see, you started doubt. You see, he is he reviving? He's, he's already dead. Amen. But your own belief can make him to revive. Amen. But I say faith can take it away, and unbelief can bring it back. Put your faith in action. Amen. This boy. In Padu Tabernacle, 
there was a boy sitting on a wish here. He was having polio. That's in the message, the sixth sense. He was having polio. And in the prayer meeting, when the prophet got to the boy, but Abraham looked at that boy. He said, boy, he said, polio has brought you into this condition. He said, that is exactly the truth. And look at the prophet. He said, but can I get a word of consolation? He said, can I get a word of consolation? But Abraham looked at him. And the prophet said, by his stripe, you are healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, go and testify. You are healed. Oh, and the boy took it into his heart and started thanking the Lord. Praise the Lord, I'm healed. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, I am healed. And he got home. Oh, praise the Lord, I am healed. Right from the wish here. And this time he said, Praise the Lord, I am healed. The mother will feel some of this boy. Praise the Lord, I am healed. And the father will talk. The people in the neighborhood, they are yearning this boy. And he's the one wish here. I say, Praise the Lord, I am healed. The next week, the boy will say, Praise the Lord, I am here. Ah, and like Shiva is running over them, they say, This boy is bringing us disgrace. So, to them, he's bringing them disgrace. So, what are we going to do? And they went to go and get three bass leading preachers. <laughs> three bass leading preachers. Say, Come and talk to my boy. Because we were. We don't, we don't say that they should not believe God, but they should not be saying it out. He's bringing embarrassment. Talk to him. Oh my. Like some professors that are so possessed of the devil. Yes. Brother Brown said that girl was raised, in, he was raised in a very good home. But the problem, he has never got the fire yet. And one of the lecturers say, Have you ever enjoyed life before? And I guess say, No, I don't know what he said. He said, Oh, you are really missing. Demon possess. And Bode Brown said, He took the girl out. Oh, my. And her life was no longer the same. That's why I said, What you need is not just religion, you need the fire. You need the fire inside of you. That is what we all need. The fire of God. It's not just the religion. Praise the Lord. You have the experience. You know who he is. It's not just to know the word, but you need to know him. But the brother said to know him is life. Amen. Amen. And they got this three bastard preacher and they started talking to the boy and say, I will say, you see, don't cause embarrassment to your opinion. Uh, we are not saying that you should not have faith, but you see, stop testifying and shouting like that that you are here. And the boy look at them. When you put your faith in action, God will give you the last trial. And that was the last trial of that boy to get out from that polio condition. And the boy look at them. And the boy say, oh! He said, why can't you have mercy on me? He said, if you are in the same condition that I am, will you let someone to rob you of your last hope in Christ? As in, don't rob me of my last hope. By his life, I am here. And what I'm going to write away 
he get out of the polio. He get out of the wheelchair. Praising the Lord. God disgraced the bastard ministers. Hallelujah. He put his faith into action. Hallelujah. God wants us to put our faith in action. Because you know, no matter how beautiful a bed is, no matter how big and the wind is so strong, as long as you put it in a cage, it cannot fly. It cannot fly. Oh, it needs to get free and exercise the liberty that God has given unto him. God has given you liberty. Jesus has given you liberty. Exercise the liberty that God has given to you in Christ. And tell the devil you are a liar. If he puts his hand on your child, tell him you are a liar. Get off your hands from my child in Jesus' name. And he's going to be. Amen. If he puts his hand on your family, tell him the same thing. If it's troubling your life, surrender your life to Christ and let the devil hear that he's no longer your master. Put your faith in action. Hallelujah. Try to cut our time short. One more. One time. These ladies, they were neighbor. And they went to the meeting of the prophet. And when she got into the meeting, it was not long when she got into the meeting. The Holy Spirit directed the prophet. And Brother Abraham saw that lady and make mention of her name and where she came from. And he said, you are having an ulcer. He said, the Lord heal you now. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord, you are healed. Just go and testify. Oh, when that was done, the neighbor that they came together was very happy. And the Holy Spirit, oh, when you are happy at the good of order, God is about to attend to you. It's not that you say, what is he doing? Hey, look at him. He even think that uh, he is spiritual. Oh, you miss your blessing. And she was happy. And the Holy Spirit turned and looked at it. He said, oh, it's where you are neighbor. He said, when I'm talking to your, your friend, he said, you are very happy. He said, the Lord made you whole. You are having a gutter. Of course, that one can be seen. She was having a gutter. So one was having a gutter, the other one was having her ulcer. So the woman got home. She wasn't jealous. And God visited her. She didn't say, and he's my friend. It should have been me first. Why did God attend to her case first? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And do you know what happened? This lady got home and started testifying, Praise the Lord, I am here. And the husband looked at him and said, hey, Where are you coming from? Of course, each day she's testifying. Each day she testify, she still have the pain. And she will roll on the floor. Oh, and you say, Praise God, I am healed. And your husband say, Hey, what is this? You are healed and you are still rolling on the floor. And the husband called and said, Sweetheart, I didn't say you should not believe what you want to believe. He said, But that, just keep it into your heart. And believe whatever you want to. Don't be saying that you are healed. It's embarrassing in the neighborhood. The woman said, What? He said, I have not been in the meeting five, mi five minutes when that man called me out and tell me who I am. He said, For me not to testify, I will be embarrassing the Lord. He said, Even though I die, he said, I will testify. And Brother Brown said, each time the children are going to school, you know, and the leftover that have some spices, she will pack it. He said, Lord, I am healed. Thank you. And she will eat. Oh, she will have some pains. Oh, Lord. Oh, I am healed. And do you know, 
one faithful day look when you come to God when you come to the house of God and you testify and you say that oh I believe the Lord has done it don't think that you just say that and you just go home and forget about it God that see you when you are saying that that same God one day we will we walk to your neighborhood and see that my son that testifies here is he still standing by it he want to see your testimony and both Abraham said that day the angel of the Lord visited that house visited that neighborhood wanted to see maybe this woman still stand by what she confessed what do you confess what do you go out again to do hallelujah so God visited that home and the prophet said a cool breeze hallelujah why God meet that woman in that faith hallelujah faith in action a cool breeze went over the woman and she said I am hungry and she went packed the spices the leftover of the children and she just hit the whole thing <gasps> she said I'm still hungry nothing was happening I'm still hungry packed the food and started eating those were the hot pepper and, you want, oh. and she said I am here <laughs> praise the Lord <laughs> oh then what did he do but Abraham said she started going to the house of her friend to do what to testify that God has visited me finally and do you know what happened in the house of the other lady she just woke up that morning and the gutter shrink and roll off from her neck hallelujah the gutter shrink and just fell off and the woman screamed and said screaming in the neighborhood and people gathered so why she was going approaching she saw people gathering what is happening hallelujah behold they met one another it was testimony that jammed testimony (laughs) hallelujah you can have the same experience I don't care about your challenges I don't care about the difficulties. God is equal to every task. Put your faith in action. Why? We are not talking about an historical historical God. We are talking about Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us stand the Lord. Let us stand up and claim claim our healing, claim our progress, claim our whatsoever. Put your faith in action. Begin to talk about your faith. I believe. Begin to ask. Tell the Lord what the need is. Put your faith into action. I said, I believe you are more than able. I know you are more than able. You can do it. And you have done it for me. Oh yes, I claim it, Lord. Because your word said it. If your word have said it, I believe it, and it settled it. Oh. Be free. Take that God-given wings of faith and fly with it. Every cage is broken. Exercise or appropriate your faith. If you are sick, claim your healing. If you are depressed, talk to that devil. If there you have problem in your home, speak to that storm. Your business is not going fine. Help operate your faith. Do the right thing. Put your faith in action. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Keep your promise to him. He will keep his promise. He's more than able. Oh, Jesus. He's alive.
today he is the same certainly he is if the blood that Moses could trust him I can trust him too if blood that Moses could trust him you can also trust him too if that woman of blood issue could trust him and touch his garment and receive a healing you can also trust him too for he is open and willing he is begging and accepting whosoever will let him come and drink from the water of life freely whosoever will let him come whosoever will let him ask the door is open he said knock it to be open seek you will find ask and it shall be given appropriate your faith put your faith in action and you will see the positive results That is what we need today. A reviver of that time. Oh. Oh. He shall be done even as he said. No Oh 
Jesus, our dear gracious Father, desire your children, Lord. They have come to accept your word to be true, and that the devil is a liar. And knowing that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we have got to talk about a living God and not just an historical God that is put in history Lord you are the God of the present time and your people are putting their faith in action this hour you know needs that are represented here there's no desires that is hidden away from you both that are at the altar and those in the congregation Father, let the power of the Holy Spirit begin to move over. And let desires and requests be granted in Jesus' name. Father, let that same faith follow them to their homes. Lord. Let that same faith follow them to their offices. Lord. Let that same faith follow them to their school. Lord, Lord, and when the due time comes, they will come back to testify of your goodness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, because you have done it, Lord. We bless your holy name. We give you praises and honor. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There is no mountain that we can climb when I say we. I'm in Jesus' hand. If you got Jesus, and it's not, there is no mountain that we can find. No mountain that we can find. When I say, Let's give God a round of applause. 